Uh, Jen asks, how do you envision markets transitioning from centralized to decentralized exchanges, and what are the implications you see at large? Um, decentralized exchanges are a fantastic idea. I think it's an idea that can be applied fairly uh, directly to trading between open digital cryptocurrencies. Um, but trading cryptocurrencies to fiat currencies, trading between, for example, US dollars and Bitcoin, is a lot harder to decentralize. And the reason for that is because the dollar system is centralized. Um, you have some examples of decentralization, and recently they haven't been growing as fast. And things like local bitcoins or um, various types of cash markets, ATM machines, those are fiat to bitcoin exchanges, and they are decentralized. But they can't really generate a lot of volume of transactions. Uh, they're not very convenient. Whereas doing things like atomic swaps, uh, cross-chain atomic swaps, where you can swap currencies from two blockchains with two transactions that are trustless uh, and where neither participant can cheat, means that we could see many more decentralized uh, cryptocurrency to cryptocurrency exchanges. So we'll see how that happens. I think that that will be really interesting. Another possibility that we're we're seeing, and I think a lot of um, a lot of different participants are now exploring, is the possibility of having fiat currencies expressed as some kind of pegged uh, cryptocurrency. Um, an example of that would be Tether, or um, there are some proposals for some other forms like that where basically you have fiat currency in reserve, and then you have a cryptocurrency asset that is issued in equal proportion, and you can trade that on the blockchain. That allows you to do arbitrage and decentralized exchanges for, um, for fiat currencies, too. Although, of course, the bank deposits that contain the actual asset, for example, US dollar, uh, those are still centralized. Will a tether collapse lead to such a fierce bear market that it kills off Bitcoin? And will decentralized atomic swaps and, and BISC be too late and weak to save the day? Um, you know, I haven't really studied uh, what's happening with tether, but I do know that it is a centralized um, and centrally managed uh, system, and that represents uh, custodial risks, uh, counterparty risks, like any other centralized uh, and centrally controlled system. Um, having lived through a few very, very big crises in Bitcoin, um, I'm really uh, not fearful of a fierce bear market that could kill off Bitcoin. Um, I really don't think that that can happen for a variety of, of reasons. Um, one reason is that most people who get into Bitcoin today don't realize how big a deal the collapse of empty Gox was. We're talking about a time when there was only one exchange, when that exchange was responsible for price setting, and when that exchange was responsible for the vast majority of all of the exchange volume. And when it collapsed, it collapsed suddenly, catastrophically, and with a loss that was a staggering amount of money as a percentage of the total amount of Bitcoin in circulation. And Bitcoin didn't die. Um, it was the first and only time I was afraid that this might really knock Bitcoin back by a long time, or even potentially stop it in its tracks and force us to reboot the currency and start something new. And when it didn't happen, I realized that Bitcoin is more resilient than I thought. And then I started thinking about what my reaction would have been if Bitcoin had dropped precipitously back to double digits or even single digits in value against the dollar. And I realized that what I would probably do is buy all of them. Uh, with whatever cash I had. And then I realized that everybody else would be thinking the same, or at least a, a very large number of people who had seen that this experiment was working and believed in it, would think the same. 
this idea of buy the dip isn't always investment advice or good investment advice. In fact, in some cases, it's terrible investment advice. It's catching a falling knife, as they say in investment circles. But there are some people who believe in this project so strongly that if they see an opportunity to get back in at a much lower cost basis, they will. And some of these people have a lot of money now, and so they will. Their what they consider a buying opportunity is much higher than what I would. Um, and um, I, in fact, I recently saw a tweet that was kind of funny, which said, uh, "What would you do if Bitcoin dropped to zero?" And someone responded. Uh, it wouldn't, because uh, if it dropped to one penny, I could buy all of them for $168,000, and I would. <laughs> um, that kind of attitude at different price points um, means that uh, I don't see that scenario. Could a collapse of something like Tether uh, set us back by a significant period of time? Yes. I mean, we keep seeing these things happen. And they are the result of centrally controlled, centrally managed custodial systems. And Tether is one of those. Um, the, the same thing could be said for the recent uh, massive theft at uh, CoinCheck, which was half a billion dollars worth of, of NEM and, uh, and a significant amount of Ripple. Uh, we will continue to see these centralized systems introduce counterparty risk, and every now and then that counterparty risk is going to turn into an actualized loss. Mm -hmm.